I know, I know what you're thinking. Really, Beard? The food tab? What could we possibly discuss about the food tab, for Pete's sake? First of all, how dare you diminish food talk? And second, I'm hungry. So, let's eat. Only problem, we will have to grow our own food for the time being. The basic farm is exactly that, worthlessly basic. However, you will still need a science machine for one regardless. To grow crops, you'll need to plant seeds. And this goes for all farms, so that's very easy enough. But as far as growth time or harvest go, a basic farm will have you harvest 20 crops before needing refertilization in order to plant additional seeds. And for growth time, basic farms need 20 minutes of daylight to fully produce said crops. So you see these quadrants, or rather pieces of a pie here for the day timer. One piece of the pie is 30 seconds. And again, you need 20 minutes of daylight. So as you can see, it's gonna take some time. So all right then, what about improved farms, Beard? Well, you will be needing to upgrade to an alchemy engine for one, but if you can manage that, let's talk. Improved farms can see a harvest 30 crops before needing fertilization of the plot itself, and crops grow two times faster than those within basic farms. 10 minutes over 20. Other than that, they are still both farm plots and function the same. So what else is there need to know? Well, if you don't wish to wait for these crops to grow, you can use manure, rot, or even guano to speed up the process a bit. Crops will not grow come winter, so be very mindful there. And crops require natural light and don't starve together. So cave farming can only be done where light peeks through from the surface every now and then. And be careful. No natural light for one and a half days means your crops will wither. Also, the amount of dank fruit or veg that can come from growing crops is ridiculous, so have fun. And don't get stung. The bee box is next and can lead to some of the best food production across the entire game. The production of honey via these enslaved insects is a simple process. However, one must work towards it first. You are gonna want to craft a bug net in order to capture a good number of butterflies. But why exactly? Well, because captured butterflies can be planted to produce additional flowers in the world. And this plays a massive role in honey production. So here's the deal. Each box has four bees within it, and each box spawns a bee every two minutes. These bees must reach and pollinate six separate flowers total in order to add one honey count to their box. If they don't do that before dusk, the count resets. So yes, more flowers means a higher chance of that not happening. Bee boxes have four stages of them all producing different amounts of honey, up to a total of six per box. And harvesting this honey is as easy as a click. But do mind the things that may come because of that. And some notes here. If you and your boxes are far away from each other, the game automatically changes the production behavior to one honey per day. So it is a good idea to stick around them now and then, but production doesn't ever stop completely. Come spring, all bees are killer bees. However, this also does not stop production. And yes, you can even operate bee boxes from within the caves, but not in the most conventional way. Setting fire to bee boxes releases them, and they will be neutral to you. And in doing so, you just kind of allow them to roam and pollinate the flowers for production. Not the best method really, but hey, it is doable. Ah, the drying rack. The thing that actually prompted this video, honestly. A viewer asked me if meat dried at the same rate across the board, and I said, nope, it doesn't. So, allow me to explain. Big meat, as you see before you here, takes two days to dry into jerky. Monster meat takes one day to dry into monster jerky. Battleless wings take two days to dry into small jerky. Morsels, frog legs, and drumsticks take one day to become small jerky. And now kelp fronds can be dried in but a quarter of a day into dried kelp fronds, which is notable for their 10 sanity each gain. Drying meat serves in prolonging it for your survival, which is incredibly advantageous. However, know that rain prevents any drying of the meat whatsoever 
which can be very, very annoying, especially in spring. But it is also possible for meat to rot on the rack still, so be very mindful there. And speaking of preserving food, the icebox is essential in doing just that. But let's not just state the obvious here. Ice boxes can also store our ham bats, thermal stones, ice cube, noggin clothing, and even the fashion melon, all the while prolonging their spoilage time or cooling them down permanently. But yes, it is quite simple. Food in the ice box will spoil far slower than food outside of one. Two times slower, mind you. So you best find and spend them gears wisely. Next up, the crock pot. Yet another pretty darn simple food tab structure. And you know what? Because of that, I'm not even gonna attempt to regurgitate everything I have already done over the years, as there is no way we are talking about 50 plus dang recipes that have come from this thing. I have covered them all from across every single Don't Starve experience. So you will just have to head elsewhere if you want the specifics. So moving on to the bucket of poop. The bucket of poop is not only very fun to say, it is all about fertilization efficiency. Taking but three manure to craft, it has a total of 10 uses. So yes, it is quite darn efficient if you've got the bone shards to make them. But not only can it be used for fertilizing anything that requires it, Bucket of Poop is also needed for both the Mushlight and Glow Cap recipes gotten from Toadstool underneath the light tab. Beautiful. But now we're talking mushroom planters. Some of my favorite things across all of Don't Starve history. And I'll keep it very simple. You plant one mushroom of choice within a planter or two, and less than four days later, you can harvest them for four total mushrooms, a net of three overall. So good, and yet it gets better. Mushroom spores from mush trees down in the caves begin to form come winter, spring, and summer, and the colors of the mush trees correspond with said seasons. Use a bug net to catch a few, plant the actual spores within these plants planters now, and in the same amount of time as before, you will be able to harvest six total mushrooms per planter for a net of five overall. Absolutely amazing. Oh, and spores may even spawn from the planters that have had spores planted in them. But if that wasn't enough, they can grow all year round within the caves. Yes, even during winter. The only issue is that they will only grant four harvests each and only accept additional living logs as fertilization, essentially. So they are expensive, yes, but so, so worth it. And the last non-character specific food tab craft, the salt box. Something I personally do not use very often. However, I probably really should. Think an ice box, only, you know, not at all. Salt boxes also preserve food, yes. However, it cannot hold actual crockpot meals, or heck, even just cooked foods, seeds, honey, or ice. It is all about preserving ingredients, pretty much, at their base, and does so by slowing the spoilage time of said ingredients by four times the usual amount. Pretty darn amazing, actually. Perhaps I should visit some salt stacks on the ocean now and then. But at this time, the wrap up with Warley. He has three additional food tab crafts, including additional portable crock pots. Once more, I will not dive deep into all this crap because I already have. Just note that only Warley can use these and that they cook 25% faster than normal crockpots. The portable grinding mill is next and is really just an avenue to access the seasonings tab. Garlic powder on food makes it so that when consumed, you will take 33% less damage for four minutes. Honey crystals on foods double the efficiency of mining boulders, chopping trees, and hammering structures, and last for half a day. Chili flakes are legendary as they provide foods with an effect that grants 20% more damage for half a day, as well as raising our temperatures for a wee bit. And finally, seasoning salt grants a 25% boost to all of food's healing effects. All are really darn good actually, so you should learn how to use them well. Oh, but of course 
course, in order to actually use these spices on foods, you will need the Final Food Tab Craft, the portable seasoning station. Very self-explanatory, so have fun. And there you have it, everyone. The Food Tab and Don't Starve Together. And I don't know about you, but I am even more hungry than before we started. So let's wrap it up here. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.